Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, and today we're going to talk about consciousness. Things appear and disappear on consciousness, and um, I will get into the depth of that. And before we uh, begin talking about uh, our subject of this week, uh, we're going to do a meditation. It's a healing meditation. Uh, we're going to be sending love and light to one of our uh, sisters, Linda, in Sweden, um, helping her and praying for her and wishing her for a speedy healing after her stroke. And apparently from last week when we did work on her and we sent her energy, she's been feeling better. She, she sent me a message that her vision got uh, better after the healing energy we sent her. So um, <clears throat> since we're getting positive feedback, we will be doing that again. Now, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is simply we shifting our attention at this moment from the outside, we're shifting our attention within ourselves. So as we are in this process of shifting the attention inwards, we are being reminded by putting our focus to our own center, bringing our focus to the very core of our own being, the presence, our own, the presence of Her Majesty, the presence of our own soul, our own being, which is here, the power source of our breath, the power source of all life, all lives across the universe are being supported by the same power source, and that's God. Even if it's dark negative entities, they are being powered up by the power of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul. All beings in the universe, they, at the end of the day, they come and bow at the feet of Her Majesty the supreme soul source, the supreme force, the life force that gives life to all. So we simply bring our attention in that direction because the power of love, the power of God, the presence of Her Majesty is being found within yourself. It's in you, it's in me, it's in every one of us. So we bring our attention to that place, which is here. It's not a story, it's not an imagination, it's not a wish to be, it's not a positive thinking. This is not a pseudo spiritual thing. It is the very truth of existence that the very being, the life force is inside you. You're the one. You're the one you've been looking for. So you bring your attention in this direction to the very source of life. And you're the very example of it. So by bringing your attention to the source of yourself, and all, immediately your mind quiets down because you're being focused on one pointedness, on one point, and the mind goes into silence. The mind becomes quiet and you begin to touch and get access to your own power source, the ultimate being. So go ahead 
simply bring your attention inwards. And for those of you who are a li little bit confused and have a hard time doing this, is that look for that place where your thoughts come from. What is, what's there before you think? What's there before you feel? What is the background prior to thoughts arising and bring your attention to that place and take a deep breath and relax into it. Relax into the source of yourself. Now, if any thoughts or any emotions, anything rises from that place, it's okay. Allow things to be. Don't try to manipulate anything. This is simply shifting your attention from the other to inner, to one point within yourself. And breathe into that and relax into it and trust yourself, trust your own being by simply breathing into it. Trust the power of God. Keep your attention on it. That God, the Supreme Soul, is operating in this moment from within you, within yourself. And you can relax into that. And by discovering God inside yourself, all fear and anxiety, worry, disappear. Fear loses its power. Dark loses its power because you're accessing the light within yourself. And no force has any kind of power at the presence of light, at the presence of God. And as you are in this place, it's silent, it's quiet, it's warm, it's comforting because you have emerged your awareness back into the center of yourself. I would like you to expand this concentration into a laser beam, into light. And in your imagination, connect this light, you become a laser beam and connect this to the heart of everybody that you love. And make a web. All the hearts of the people you care for and you love get connected through 
the light with each other. And as the hearts get connected to one another, the power gets stronger. It begins to feed off of itself. And the power of love begins more and more and more by connecting to the hearts of everyone that you love. And as we're together in this union with each other in this moment, we connect our hearts with one another as well. Connecting our hearts to the unified field of love. Just like a human body, that all the arteries, the veins in the body, they all get connected to the bloodstream, to the heart. The love flow the passion of life, the joy of this moment, the very power of creation brings life, is floating through, connecting everything with everything. And energizes you, elevating you, to a higher dimension by raising your vibrations to a higher frequency, rising above duality, rising above fear, rising ab above worry and anxiety, bringing you into this total oneness, total connectedness into this brotherhood and sisterhood of light. And now as we're in this place, take a look inside yourself Take a look at the center of yourself and see that there is a ball of light in your heart. And this ball of light begins to grow. And it's growing as it's glowing. And as you have your hands, you can bring your hands up. You can bring your hands and put it on your heart, on your chest area. And you can feel the vibrations of this ball of light glowing out of your heart. And it's pulsing. And it's, as it's getting larger and larger, I would like you to turn your hands and hold them parallel to each other and feel the energy in between your hands. Feel this field of love, field of light, the power of the presence, the power of the being here in between your hands. And as you're in this position, you can even examine it if you like by pressing your hands against each other. You will see that there is resistance in energy. 
or by pulling your hands away from one another, you can see the presence getting stronger. You can feel the magnitude of the energy field that is being provided in between your hands and it's increasing moment by moment. And you can see light is pouring out of your heart. And as you are in this position, you can even feel the boundaries of your own body because light has taken over your body and you're bodyless, yet you're here. You become limitless, yet you are here. No limitations, no physical body, simply the presence of the being and you are that. And as you have your hands in this way, I would like you to feel and touch the etheric body of our sister, Linda. Bring Linda in this moment. And if you don't know what Linda looks like, it's okay. Call Linda here in this moment and feel her etheric body with your hands. Touch it. And hold it in your heart. Hold it as if you're putting your hands around her physically. You're putting your hands around someone you really love. Holding this person in your arms And you can feel the, their presence. But in this moment, we're sending this love, deep love and light to one of our sisters, one of the warriors of light who has been in this journey with us for a long time. And we're sending her positive vibrations, love, light, wishing her body to come back and restore itself to perfect health so she can physically play with us and run around and enjoy everything that we do when we're together and transforming her, transforming her body to perfect health. If this intention aligns with the highest good of her highest, high, highest self, higher self, you're holding her in your hands. You can feel the energy. You can touch her etheric body the presence. And as you are in this process, she turns to pure light. And as you're just continuing, you lose boundaries between you and her and everything else, everything turns into pure light and the being. And you can see for yourself the power that resides within you. The power of love and light and healing that is here available to you. When it's being accessed correctly and what it can do
and this power of healing, it can transform and heal anything because it's not limited by any kind of boundaries. It's not limited by the physical laws, the third dimensional laws. It goes beyond any kind of physical laws, even beyond our understanding, because it is the infinite. And it has the power to transform and heal anything, anywhere, at any moment. So as you're just sitting here, focused, relaxed, in deep meditation, completely dissolved into the oneness. Take another deep breath. And keep your focus on the center of yourself and see that your heart is glowing with light.
We have our sister Linda in the center of our prayers, center of our attention, sending your love and light. Seeing her recovering very fast very quickly, restoring her health back. So once again, she can come and play with us again. Slowly, slowly. You bring your attention from a complete place of expansion into back to your physical form. You have been traveling and journeying from your heart in this expansion to the oneness and now this contraction of coming back and bringing every molecule, atom and back into the physical body into this dimension. Coming back from fifth dimension to the third dimension. Slowly, slowly, you're, you're bringing, coming back here into this form. And this is a very, very good practice because it gives you a chance and a way of seeing for yourself that you are one with everything in a complete oneness, as well as you have the ability to come back and to come back to this physical form. So you're not limited and you have the ability to exercise and demonstrate to yourself that you can expand your awareness and become one with total consciousness and you can bring your awareness back into a physical body and operate from this one. So you haven't lost anything. So this demonstrates to you that you do have the ability of expanding and contracting. 
Yet in the same time, throughout this transition, the sense of I am, I am does not change. The sense of I am in a complete vastness and oneness with all, and the same sense of I am into a concentration and a focus on an individual, a physical body, into this dimension. It's the same I am in, in the entire process. It's the same awareness. It's the same um, observer that is observing, yet to the I am, nothing has changed. It remains the same. And it's the same I am when the physical body dies. When the physical body dissolves, it's the same I am. I am is going to remain here. It won't go anywhere. So while we're in this physical body, in this dimension, we get to prove to ourselves and demonstrate to ourselves, bring it to our own attention by practicing this to our practice, seeing it for ourselves. It's the recognition of the I am, not just some words, not just something you read in an esoteric book, the I am, and you may be repeating it, but you don't understand it. That's a different story. And we all have done that. But that's not the goal. The goal is to recognize this. It's the recognition of who we are. That we are pure presence. It's always been that way. And it's always going to be this way. To identify with the truth of who we are. Identifying with the truth of who we are. Yet all kinds of things appear and disappear on consciousness. Continuously the dance of existence is going to be played. And when you're in a human body in this dimension, all kinds of stories are going to appear. Whether you're going through your own emotional process and emotions rising due to whatever is the story, you know, you've gone through some traumas in your childhood or even in your adulthood, and things rising, it rises, it's just like waves rising in the ocean. A wave rises and it falls back into the ocean. And sometimes these waves, they look very dangerous, they look scary, it's very stormy, and you're having all these ups and downs rising. But where do they go? No matter how big is the wave, let's say there's a wave rising and it's 20 meter and it's really frightening. And then where does it go back? It goes back into its source, where it came from. And no matter how stormy is the ocean, after a day or two or a few days or a month or whatever, at the end, you always see that it's at one, one point, the ocean is completely flat and it's very calm. 
And then you can experience that the waves are rising and falling. So rise and fall, rise and fall. So, and it's got these motions in it, but all of it is happening in the same ocean. So it's the same thing. Your thought starts to rise. It's the, all of a sudden there's the appearance. If you start to look at things differently, you know, word it differently and look at it differently. Like your thoughts, instead of identifying with your thoughts as they're your thoughts, okay, you can look at it and identify with it as the appearance of the appearance of the thoughts. It's like one day you wake up and you have a zit on your face and all of a sudden something appears, a few different spots appeared on your face. So, and you tell yourself, you get up in the morning, go to the bathroom, you're looking at a mirror and say, oh my God, these things appeared on my face all of a sudden, or this weird thing appeared, uh, this dark thing appeared on my arm. I don't know what that is, but something all of a sudden shows up. Yeah. And then, you know, of course you're trying to put some ointment on it or do some treatments to get rid of it, but it appears and then eventually it disappears. And the same thing, thoughts appear. Where do they appear? They appear on consciousness. They appear on I am. They're appearing on this screen, this white screen that you're watching a movie and the thoughts appear in front of it. The same thing with emotions. They appear and they disappear. You don't always feel sad. You don't always experience anger. You're not continuously experiencing anxiety or fear. Something happens and all of a sudden stuff starts to bubble up. So a wave is coming, wave is rising and falling back. So something appears and then it disappears. These are appearances on this white or this black screen white screen, black screen, like if you go to the movie and then the movie, they turn on the projector and the movie starts to play and it's moving, it's a movie and it starts to appear for you. It's a story starts to be played. It could be a horror story, it could be a love story, it could be a fantasy, comedy, whatever, it appears. And then after a couple of hours, the movie ends. And then when the movie ends, it's over, it's time to leave the cinema. So they'll turn on all the lights and you look at the flat white screen that they were projecting the movie on. And the flat white screen is same. Nothing has happened to it. And let's say you were watching a movie that there were some killing or some blood got spilled. People died, people killed each other, but there is no blood on the white screen. The white screen remains white. Even though during the time you were watching the movie, it was very dramatic. It was heartbreaking. But at the end, when the projector stops and they turn on the lights, you see that the screen 
the theater's screen remains white. Nothing's happened to it. Same thing. Same thing with consciousness. The I am consciousness. Things appear and disappear on it. And you can see that with your own life. You can see your own body. And your body has appeared on the screen of this movie on consciousness. And this body is changing, always changing. It's moving. It's a movie. Your body is moving through different stages. It's a baby, then it's getting, goes to adolescent, it's a teenager, then it's an adult, then it starts to getting older. You can see it's moving, it's going transition. In front of your eyes, it's changing from one thing to another. And eventually it's time's gonna come to an end and it disappears. So it appears, it disappears. And that's the story of what is going on. And the same thing with, with everything else. You can see it with friends, family, they appear in your life. Sometimes you have these friends, you think you're gonna be with them forever. They're your best friends, you're inseparable. It, you can, they cannot separate you from each other. But eventually, your friend gets married, wants to move to another country, wants to have their own family, own career, and you get separated. So again, they appear, it's like a wave appears, and the wave goes back into the source. Your friend comes and they go. Your family members, they, they show up and then they disappear. They go their own ways. And you can see it with where you live, with the buildings. Um, there's been some buildings that you remember, they've been there from childhood, but then some Eventually they get old or a corporation company comes and buys that building and they demolish that building and they build something new. So you have this really old, beautiful structure and they come and take it and demolish it and they build a high rise and it's gone. So it appeared and it disappeared. And then you can see that with the governments. Different prime ministers, they show up, they have their time, and then they have to leave office. And another prime minister or another president or another king or queen or princess is gonna come. They have their time and then the time is finished. They appear and then they disappear they go. These are movements taking place on consciousness. Things appear and disappear. That's the Leela of life. That's the play of life. And then events. You hear about events. Things happen. Some are scary, some are frightening. Some are world wars, like second world war. Some are like diseases that they appear and disappear. Plagues, a plague comes and it wipes off an entire race or it kills thousands of people, cleans out, destroys, or some kind of tsunami or some kind of earth changes happen 
and there's this beautiful beach that you really love and you remember it from childhood. You used to go and play there and it's very pristine and amazing beach. But then some kind of tsunami or some earth changes come and it destroys the entire beach. Or the water goes up and it's taken over the beach and that beach no longer is there. So it disappears. Things appear, things disappear. But all of this time, the I am, the observer, remains the same. So what do we do in face of all these world events, things happening, and some of them, they affect us and they frighten us because they're very close to home and they scare us. So how do we deal with that? Because yes, what we're talking about sounds really good. And for some of us, it's understandable as long as things don't hit home, as long as this is happening in another continent, it's happening for somebody else, it's happening in another country. But then when it's happening in your own neighborhood, how do I maintain my state of higher self? How do I maintain being a Buddha, how do I stay in this place? Completely connected to the source and not allow myself to buy into this ups and downs because I can see all of a sudden things happening in my neighborhood and my friends are losing their lives or they're dying or all kinds of things happens. So, what are you talking about, Zarathustra? How do I deal with that? Because everything you're saying sounds really good as long as it's not happening to me, as long as it's not happening in my town, in my neighborhood, in my country, in my family. But then when it's happening in your hood and it's very close to home, then a lot of people freak out. And all of this spiritual training and teaching becomes nonsense for them. They can't maintain their position. And that's what my intention is, to work with you and to make sure you realize this, to recognize this. Because this teaching and this work is not a kind of training that, oh, it's great, I love it, I sit with Zarathustra, I feel really calm and quiet as long as everything goes my way. We need to demonstrate this teaching and this training when things don't go our way, when shit, shit hits the fan, when a real major life storm is happening in our lives. That is the time to demonstrate this teaching. That's the preparation. So when it's really close to home, we can still stay into our center and maintain our status of I am. And in the face of all these things appearing and disappearing, even though it's a very close to home, everything is appearing and disappearing and it looks very scary, but you are in this place, you're the Buddha, you're, you're in this position. You're in this place 
that you are not reacting into the rise of the ocean, the waves rising and falling, you are remain centered because you are seeing through it, because you're looking at it as if it's, you're looking at it as an image. You, you are, know the truth that what's rising and what's falling is not real. What's changing, the ups and downs, is not real. That's my very goal, to transmit that to you, my brothers and sisters. The truth, so you don't fall asleep and fall into the trap that millions of millions of people have fallen into by identifying with the world, by identifying with your even thoughts, emotions, and your own body, identifying to them as if it's real. As if it's the truth. And then you become a victim of the Maya. And you have to repeat the whole thing once again. By bringing our attention to the source of ourselves. That, pay attention to this one. Be alert about what I'm about to tell you. Identifying with that which doesn't change. Keeping your attention on that which doesn't change. And recognizing that anything else that changes is not real. No matter what that is, anything that changes, anything that comes and goes is not real. And there is only one thing that doesn't come and go. Keeping your attention on that, that which doesn't come and go versus everything else that comes and goes. And that's how you become free from the Maya from the illusion. And so you won't fall back into the trap. That's the only way you can free yourself. Otherwise, the world that appears to be, what appears on consciousness, it could be very, very frightening because it has no stability. No matter how well you try to position yourself to be stable, something's going to happen. Like, for example, right now, this virus in China. And we haven't got the news, you know, we can get the news that it's spreading all over the world and it's killing everybody and can keep you in this paranoia of really fear. If it supposedly spreads. So you can go through all these ups and downs because no matter how much money you have, no matter how well you've secured yourself, you got a few different homes around the world, you got your retirement money, you got all the things you wanted set up, but now what are you gonna do about an airborne virus that has come to your town? 
are you going to, and no one has any cure for it. Now, what are you going to do now? So what it's going to do is it's going to create a lot of fear and anxiety. Whether it's going to do anything to you or not, it will, if you're not trained, you haven't done your work, you're not really focused, you don't know about the truth, what is real and what is not real, so you are still identified to what comes and what goes, including this body, including your thoughts and your emotions. You believe what comes and goes is real. So then that comes with fear and anxiety and worry until your attention gets laser focused on that which doesn't move, that which doesn't come and go. That's the only thing that is real. You bring your attention on that. You work on that and you ignore everything else then you will see that nothing in this life, nothing in this existence can touch you. It has no power on touching you. It cannot affect you because you're focused on the very truth of I am. The presence, that which doesn't come and go, that which is always here. Everything else is an appearance on consciousness. It appears and it disappears. They're not real. You may say, well, how come all these other people, they're not following this practice? You know, how come just a handful of people on the planet, they're attracted to this teachings? I don't see millions of people going in this direction. Millions of people are going that direction. Well, millions of people are going to suffer because they're identified to what comes and goes. And only those handful of people who've done their work and they're really focused on the very truth of the being, on the I am, are the ones who don't buy into the story. They stay centered. Now that doesn't mean we're ignorant and we're not looking at things and paying attention to things and we're sleepy. That's not it. You're completely aware and awake and alert. But you don't get fooled by getting identified with what comes and goes. That's the difference. So if anybody has any questions for me or want to share anything with me, you're welcome to. Either you can just 
write it on a chat box or just raise your hand and I'll unmute uh, you and you can we can talk. No questions. Okay. So uh, for those of you who live in the area, uh, in Los Angeles area, I will be presenting at the Conscious Life Expo this coming weekend, uh, starting on Friday. And uh, I have four events at the Conscious Life Expo. And this is a very high, high vibe expo. It's a lot of fun. Um, a lot of interesting people gather. Uh, I always love it. And uh, a lot of friendships are being forged and you come across a lot of like-minded people. And uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, especially a few of my sisters are coming to help me and I'm very excited to see them and spend some time together. Um, I have an event on uh, Saturday, it's from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, I got two events on Sunday. Uh, you can go on my website, zaratustra.tv, and uh, check my events or go to Conscious Life Expo uh, at LAX Hilton 2020 and look at the schedule of my events. And there's a lot of other teachers, all kinds of different uh, subjects are being talked about. Um, so you may want to go to the expo um, booklet and see what really attracts you. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm at booth number 502, and that's in International Ballroom. Also, uh, two people can win the my upcoming workshop, Return to Love, that I'm going to be offering at the end of February. Uh, as well as on February 19th, I'm going to have my 10th annual uh, Fifth Dimensional Quantum Healing event, which uh, we sort of changed the name when I'm in Europe. It's the uh, Shamanic Healing uh, Circle, and uh, we're going to have this event on the 19th of February at LAX Hilton, accompanied by Evan Perman who I started at the events with 10 years ago. Well, oh yeah, okay. Thanks, Candice, I appreciate it um, for sending a message. Candice says, hi, and thank you for your blessed words. I have been in your events at Conscious Life Expo. It was profound, it changed us. Thank you. Well, thank you for connecting. I appreciate it, Candice. Um, also, we put out uh, our event, Ure, uh, as some of you, those of you who've been with me, uh, you're aware of uh, our, we're going to have our fifth annual fifth dimensional quantum healing and awareness training program in Ore, Sweden this July. And uh, those of you who are interested, reach out uh, to us, ask your questions and make your reservation. Um, we're expecting that we get sold out pretty quickly this year. We've already had a lot of inquiries. Uh, most of our single rooms are already sold out. Uh, so if you're interested uh, to get information, reach out to me and uh, make your move for a deposit so we can secure your spot. Um, my European tour starts on March 15th and I'm gonna be traveling to Europe and I'll be in Europe for two months. And you can go on my uh, website to look at the list of the countries that I'm visiting. I'm visiting five countries this year. So starting with uh, Hamar in Norway, and then I go to Frankfurt in Germany and then it moves on, so. 
Okay. I just want you to know one thing that all is well. Keep God at your focal point of your attention and stay in this place always with yourself. And when you have God in your heart, God in your life, there's nothing to be afraid of. And no matter what happens, what kind of news you get, you just keep focused and keep your attention on the center of yourself and keep connected to the life force within you. And fear appear and they disappear. But when you keep connected and you stay focused and you feel the presence of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the love of God here in your heart, then that takes over your life. And no force, no fear, no anxiety has any place. It may just appear for a moment in your life, but it will disappear and it can overrule you. When we have God in our life, God as the focal point, and I'm not talking about God as the one who punishes, I'm not talking about that image of God that's been implanted in our minds. I'm talking about the love, the presence, that's the one I'm talking about. And when you invite that and you get intimate with what's here in your heart, what's here present, which is the very, very source of your pulse, it's the very source of your pulse of your heart, the presence, the, the love, the light, the being, the spirit, then nothing can rock your world. Nothing can touch you because the power gets stronger and stronger. And it's like an invisible shield is created around you of love and light. And it will guide you step by step on this journey. And it gets stronger and stronger as you keep your focus on it. And of course, challenges will happen. Things will appear and disappear. And there are times that you may feel like you're losing it or you're being extremely challenged. But know that those are the moments in life that are necessary for you to recognize your true power, for you to recognize your connection to yourself. It's an opportunity for us to stay focused and to touch and remembering the truth of who you are that you're not disconnected from your own power source. You're not disconnected from Her Majesty, Lord God, that is shining in your heart. Those are the opportunities for you to fall back into this place because the other world got shaky 
and it forces you to go there, forces you to look and see who you really are and get in touch with your power. And when I say get in touch with your power, I'm not talking about power of manipulation, putting your power on other people. I'm talking about the true power, the presence, the presence of God in your heart that overshadows any kind of fear and darkness. Because things keep popping up all the time. But you just stay in this place. And then by staying in this place, it will give you the vision to see what is an illusion, what is not real. If you ever get a chance, there was a there is a movie, a Hollywood movie came out in the 90s. It's called um, The Little Buddha. I don't know, some of you may have seen it. The Little Buddha. And it's about this American kid that some of the Tibetan lamas, they come and approach the, the little boy and his family and and they uh, believe that he's the reincarnation of the Buddha. And anyway, it's, it's, you know, it is a Hollywood movie, but that part I don't care about is that there is a part that they're telling the story of how uh, Gautama Buddha became enlightened. And in this story, there's a part that is showing that the Buddha is sitting under the Bodhi tree and is in complete deep meditation. And as he's completely focused, all of his desires begin to appear. And his desires appear in front of him in a form of five beautiful women. And they start doing their dance and they're trying to pull, pull him out of his meditation because he is really focused on the self, on the beauty of I am, on the essence of the I am. And the sense is trying to pull him out of it. And he doesn't give it any attention. He remains in his center. And then there is, comes these hardcore storms. These tsunamis starts to come towards him, huge uh, waves are coming to fall on him and destroy him. And they're real. And he's still sitting in his meditation. He's still focused on the source. And he doesn't pay any attention on this storm of life. And then the tsunami, the waves, they disappear. And then the next thing is like this really dark, ugly army of demons, opposition. They come facing him and they're all pulling their arrows with flame on top of the arrow. And they're shooting like 10,000 arrows to him. And it still remains he doesn't try to duck or cover himself. He stays completely focused in his center. And all the arrows that coming to him, flaming arrows, they turn into roses and they fall in front of his feet. And I won't tell you the rest of it. You should watch it. It's called Little Buddha. And watch this movie, you will enjoy it. And you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks, Lord, uh, Rosalie, for your love. I appreciate it. Uh, Lorette, thank you for sending your love. Thank you for joining me. Our next academy is going to be next Wednesday. Um, we will be posting 
uh, this session of the Academy on uh, Facebook. And those of you who are in our system, they have signed up uh, in our system, you will get a copy of it with our next mailer. And uh, we will also be putting uh, this uh, Academy session on YouTube. We're sending you lots of love and light and keep connected with, with us, with me. My website is zaratustra.tv. Uh, we're going to try to live stream some of the events at the Conscious Life Expo. So, uh, so hopefully we'll be able to keep connected. I send you a lot of love. Namaste.